Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So today, I'm going to review a brand new foam cannon from MJJC. This is the MJJC Foam Cannon S version 3.0, the latest addition to their lineup. Now, we're going to talk about all the features. You're also going to see it in comparison uh, to another one of their very popular foam cannons. This is the MJJC Foam Cannon Pro version 2.0. So is one better than the other? You're going to see them in a demo, so a battle one against each other. I'm also going to swap the orifice so you guys can see what the swap does as far as the foam production is concerned. So they come shipped out with a 1.25 millimeter orifice uh, and they also supply a 1.1 millimeter orifice nozzle. So a smaller tip or an orifice will lead to more foam, especially if you have a lower powered uh, pressure washer unit and you want more foam. So we're going to see the effects of that. And uh, also I'm going to give you a conclusion which one of these two foam cannons is better than the other. So stay tuned. Let's go ahead and start the show. So hey guys, I'm Pan, welcome to the show. I hope you guys are having a great day, so let's dig right into it. Uh, by the way, I'll leave the links to all the uh, tools and products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. A uh, quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video, nobody paid for this video. Uh, I ordered these foam cannons myself online. Uh, and so the uh, first one here is the MJJC Foam Cannon S version 3.0. Now, a lot of people thought that version three is an update to to the Pro version 2.0, but don't get confused, these are two separate lineups. So the S version 3 is an update to the S version 2.0, and the Pro line is a completely different line. As you can tell, the looks are completely different. So if we talk about, first of all, the features of the uh, S version 3.0, this is the packaging that it comes in, and what are they promising compared to the previous Foam Cannon S version 2.0? So if we look at what they're talking about, so they have a new structure, so easier and smoother to control 360 degree spray, a new straw tube, apparently, uh, a new bottle and cap, that's one of the major differences, and new foam technology for thicker and uh, shaving cream-like foam. So is are their claims true? I can tell you yes compared to the previous version. And let's have a look at the body first of all. So this is the body itself, has these nice brass components here. Uh, for the quick connect, they have different connections available depending on your type of pressure washer. For example, if you have a Karcher K series, you can order with the uh, different connector here. I also like this screw on part that they have in the back for the connection. This is uh, some innovation for foam cannons. I really, really like that. And it gives you access inside there to the orifice that you can swap. You just use a flat head screwdriver and we'll be doing that a bit later, but you use a uh, flat head screwdriver. You uh, take it out and you can swap it with the uh, 1.1 millimeter orifice that they supply as a spare part. And so you can get some thicker foam if you have a lower powered unit. They say 110 bars. So anything under 1500 to 1600 PSI, uh, if you want to generate more foam, you can do a, go ahead and test that with the uh, smaller orifice size. However, note that it could trip your breaker if you're using just a 15 amp circuit. Uh, so do some testing, just keep that in mind. So they uh, have, just like the Foam Cannon Pro, uh, it is the same assembly up top, guys. So the internals are exactly identical between the Foam Cannon Pro version 2.0 and this uh, Foam Cannon S version 3.0. So it is the same body, the same internals, the same filters, uh, the same foam mesh material, all that stuff. Uh, you also get, so the 360 degree pattern, so you can see that tip there. You can tw twist it around 360 degrees so you can get vertical foam like this, or you can get horizontal foam if you wanna reach the top parts of your vehicle more easily. And also, so that's when you control the blue part. And when you control the white part, you can see you're widening the blades so you can get a wider fan or a more straight fan. So that's how much you're varying the degrees of the fan that comes out uh, of the tip. So that's pretty cool. It comes with uh, all the options. Uh, here up top on both versions, you also get the control knob for more or less foam. So you twist that to get less foam or the other way to get more foam. So it controls how much of the liquid is injected when it sprays out. So you can adjust. I always put it to the maximum foam setting because that's what I like personally. Uh, the bottle itself on version S 3.0 uh, goes up to one liter. It has the these markings here on the side so you can tell how much liquid you're putting in. It has this indent, I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but it helps with grabbing the bottle a lot better. So they were right on that. So you get good uh, grabbings on that one. 
So compared to the MJJC Foam Cannon Foam 2.0, uh, Foam Cannon Pro 2.0, you have these indents on the bottle on the bottle itself, so you can hold it like that. It has a wider base compared to the S 3.0. Uh, this one here is the traditional screw on, and it goes quite well. It has that very pliable plastic tubing, the uh, inlet tube here or the pickup tube, and it has that weighted metal ball. So regardless of what angle you're in, you're always going to be picking up liquid. And this one here just screws in like so. And so the cool thing about the uh, MJJC uh, Foam Cannon S 3.0 is the connection itself. So this one here to open it, it's just a quick tab like that, a quick connect if you want, and then screw on again. So I found that was pretty awesome. So let me do that once again. You open it just like that, and then it releases. I don't know if you can see the tabs there on the side. You see those tabs? So that what, that's what goes into that cap mechanism right there. So you put it back in and you screw. Very, very simple to do. So that was a great innovation. I also like the fact that they have a, a clear bottle. This I think is made out of PTFE uh, plastic. So it's not as, so it's a bit more pliable here. I don't know if you, there's a bit of flex. Uh, so I would be scared, of course, if you drop this multiple times, you will eventually scratch it. However, you do see the liquid. I like that. Uh, but I think the bottle on the Foam Cannon Pro 2.0 uh, is a bit sturdier and made out of thicker material. So this is uh, definitely more uh, heavy duty or more resistant. Uh, also, if we put them side by side, once again, uh, let me focus in on that. There you go. You can see the assemblies up top. They're identical. So technically you should be getting the exact same foam performance. We're going to test that. If you do see any difference uh, and you have both, perhaps it's just because your uh, unit for the foam um, Canon uh, 2.0 professional version might just be a bit older and uh, there is a bit of uh, gunked up material in the filters itself. But uh, technically these are identical in all ways for the uh, foam Canon body itself. So again, the performance should be identical. Identical. So what else can I say? Uh, this one here comes in slightly at a lighter weight, 605 grams on the scale versus 620 grams for the uh, Foam Cannon Pro version 2.0. So the uh, Pro version just a little bit um, more heavy. Uh, also, the pricing on the MJJC website at the moment of this recording, because we're filming this in the month of uh, August 2023. So uh, we're mid-August right now. This one here goes for 89 USD and so does the Foam Cannon Pro version 2.0. They updated their pricing. So the pricing is identical in the US dollars. Uh, in the US, you can get it at a slightly reduced price. Check the links uh, that I have for you in the description under the video. Uh, and in Canada, uh, this was 120 Canadian dollars uh, for me here uh, versus 110 Canadian dollars for the Foam Cannon Pro 2.0. So there's just a slight 10%, uh, $10 Canadian upcharge in Canada to get the S version 3.0. So uh, you're going to have to decide which one of the two you're getting if technically the performance is identical. I know you're dying to see this uh, in a demo, so let's go ahead and do the demo. All right, guys, so in uh, order to do the testing, we're going to first mix our batch of the uh, snow foam solution. So we're going to be using the same solution for both foam cannons. Uh, today for the test, I'm using the uh, Adams Mega Foam. So this is a snow foam and it generates a lot, a lot of snow foam. We're going to be using roughly a one to 10 dilution, which means one part of product for 10 parts of water. Uh, I'm using warm water, by the way. That's another pro tip. If you want to have more foam, use warm water when you're mixing up your batches. So in there, I have roughly a liter of water. Uh, we'll be adding roughly four ounces uh, technically, the 1 to 10 ratio calls for about 3.5 ounces, but whatever, doesn't really matter here. This is not, uh, doesn't have to be perfectly uh, set up there. So we're putting, again, roughly 4 ounces of the Adams Megafoam in there. We're going to stir that up. And this should give us plenty of foam. Now, this is not a debate if you prefer runnier foam or thicker foam. We're just comparing the performance in the same condition. So I work at 68 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or 20 degrees Celsius and 40 to 45% humidity. So I work in a controlled environment. If you are to work outside, don't let the snow foams dry on the surface, guys, and do not work in direct sunlight. That is very important. So we're going to fill in our foam cannons with uh, roughly 500 mils each. Another thing uh, you'll notice 
if that's important for you. They both have wide mouths, so that is very good to pour some liquids in, as you just saw. But the uh, Foam Cannon Pro 2.0 has a wider mouth. This one here comes in at uh, three inches, if memory serves me well, or two inches. Let me actually measure that right now to let you guys know. So yeah, we have two inches roughly for the uh, 2.0 version or the pro version and one and a half inches for the uh, foam cannon s uh, version 3.0 so the uh, this one here the pro version has a wider mouth if that means anything to you guys so it's these slight slight differences but again the performance should be identical there we go I'll mix that up again in there I love the attachment on the S3.0. That's it. That's how simple it is. And as you can tell, this looks pretty cool, right? That you can see the liquid in there. I think that's a cool feature. Perhaps they should add that to uh, the future version of this. Okay, guys. So for the test, on the left-hand side, we'll have the uh, MJJC Foam Cannon Pro version 2.0. And I'm immediately switching over to the uh, MJJC Foam Cannon S version 3.0. So this here is the Foam Cannon Pro 2.0. As you can tell, tons and tons of foam pretty thick look at that consistency dropping on the floor there as far as foam is concerned for anyone who loves foam that is pretty good and now if we look on this side so this is the uh, foam canon s version 3.0 so hopefully you can tell on camera this is nearly identical you can't really tell the difference. I mean, if I look at one panel at the same time, we're at roughly the same consistency. If I look at the foam runoff on the bottom, one versus the other, essentially pretty much the same th thickness, which makes sense because they have the exact same assembly. So the body is the same, the filters, the meshes, they're all the same. So let me back out here. Again, here we have the S3.0. And here we have the Pro 2.0. So yeah, as far as foam production is concerned in my books, they are darn near identical. Any differences that you might see, it's because this one I've been using for a lot longer. And this one is literally brand new. But uh, yeah, identical performance as far as foam is concerned, which means crazy, crazy foam, by the way. All right, guys, so now, as I said I would do, let's try and swap the orifice for the 1.1 millimeter unit. So all you have to do is take your screwdriver in there and unscrew the stock one from the body itself. So the swap is pretty, pretty simple. There we go. That one fell out, so that was the 1.25 millimeter orifice. And now let's put in the 1.1 mil orifice. Drop that in there. Screw it back in. I feel like a handyman when I do these kinds of things. <laughs> there we go. That's perfectly in there. So that is the 1.1 millimeter orifice. Let's put this back on and let's uh, foam the vehicle. All right, guys, so the uh, MJJC Foam Cannon S version three with the 1.1 millimeter orifice. Let's see the difference in foam production. I'll bring you in closer for a close up. So this is the result with the uh, orifice being at 1.1 millimeter. So definitely it is thicker. 
not by a whole margin, because don't forget I'm using a very high quality pressure washer, my Krenzel 1122 TSD. Uh, it pumps out a stout 2.1 gallons per minute of water output. That's almost eight liters per minute, if memory serves me well. But yeah, 2.1 GPM, uh, and it's rated for 1400 PSI. I set it to roughly 1000 PSI uh, to wash vehicles, but uh, more importantly, the higher the GPM count, anything above 1.6 should give you some nice, thick, rich foam. So let's see the run out here in the bottom. So it's not night and day in my case, but for lower powered units, uh, with maybe not enough water flow, switching to a 1.1 mil orifice could do a difference. But uh, yeah, this is what it gives with a 1.1 millimeter sized orifice. What do you guys think? Drop a comment in the comment section. All right, guys, so quick pro tip. When we're talking about maintenance for foam cannons, it is very important when you're done using them. So you're gonna empty the container. You're gonna rinse it out to flush any residual soap that's in there. You're gonna fill it back up, ideally with some warm water. So just clean warm water in there. If you don't have warm water, cold water is fine as well. Don't overthink it. Uh, and you're gonna reconnect it to your pressure washer and you're gonna run 30 seconds of just clear water in there to flush out any residual uh, shampoo or soap or snow foam that might still be in the body in there and clogging up the potential meshes. So you wanna make sure you do that after every use. If you wanna prolong your foam cannon durability, extend its lifetime, and of course, before you have to service the parts, make sure you have the most use out of it. Flush that with some clear water for roughly 30 seconds, and uh, yeah, that way it's gonna be free and clear. You're gonna let it air dry, and it's good to use for the next time. So overall, what did you guys think of the uh, MJJC? Foam Canon S version 3.0. I really like the ergonomics. Uh, I really like the bottle itself. I like this clear design, although uh, the MJJC Foam Canon Pro version 2.0 has a sturdier uh, bottle uh, that's definitely gonna last probably a bit longer. Uh, I like the ergonomics once again. I like that grip. The pickup tube is great, very flexible. And as you can tell, regardless of where the uh, Foam Canon is positioned, uh, it'll pick up the liquid with no issues. I like the 360 degree swivel. Uh, I like that you can adjust the uh, spray pattern in the front, uh, the knob up top to control the output of foam that you're getting, uh, the easy uh, screw on type connections here in the back with the quick connect that you can swap the orifice. I mean, there's nothing wrong about it. Uh, I just think perhaps uh, the price we're getting up there, right, at almost 90 US dollars uh, for this or 120 Canadian dollars or 110 Canadian dollars for this or same price in the US, 90 US dollars uh, for these two. These are not inexpensive. You can get some foam cannons out there for roughly like 30 30 bucks. Um, that doesn't mean they'll last as long. The performance or the features that you get might not be the best as well. Uh, if you're just a weekend warrior, there are some less expensive options. I did a foam cannon battle video before, uh, and the winner of that challenge uh, was the Brilliant Shine foam cannon from Griot's Garage. So this one here, it worked fantastically well, and you can get this at a fraction of the price. I'll leave the links in the description. Uh, and another one, when you're uh, talking about ultra high end, uh, my MTM PF22.2. Been using this for years now. This is my main workhorse. Uh, it is the one I like working with the most along with the uh, Griot's Garage uh, foam cannon. So both of them are very good. But again, the MTM is just built like a tank. The only thing I wish they would update, uh, the only feature that bothers me on this one is the uh, here. You can see the uh, opening to pour some liquids. This is very, very small. Actually, the diameter, if we compare it to the 1.5 inch or the two inch on the other two foam cannons, half an inch, perhaps, maybe less. So they definitely have to work on that. MTM, if you're watching this video, uh, please work on that. This, of course, is on the upper end of the uh, echelon. So if you want the best of the best, uh, I think the MTM PF22.2, uh, as far as performance goes, is still probably the best. Uh, now, it depends also what you prefer. Some uh, foam cannons produce some runnier foam. Some produce some thicker, richer shaving cream-like texture, uh, like these MJJCs. If you like that type, they definitely uh, can produce. Uh, one tip I have, by the way, a lot of people ask, how do I get more foam? I'm not getting the same foam as some of the YouTubers that I see online. Note that there are many, many factors that influence the quantity thickness and richness of the foam that you're getting. The main factors are, first of all, the type of pressure washer that you're using, the higher the GPM of water flow, the gallons per minute or liters per minute of water flow, the better. Anything over 1.6 gallons per minute should start to generate a lot of that thick, rich foam. 
and anything above two gallons per minute, that's the target for washing vehicles. You're gonna get some nice suds, nice foam, the, the whole nine yards. So look for higher GPM uh, pressured units. You don't wanna go above 2000 PSI to wash vehicles though. So anything between 1000 to 2000 PSI is more than enough pressure. Uh, what you really need is to look for that water output, the water flow in gallons per minute, the higher, the better. The second one is the type of foam cannon. So if you have a cheap foam cannon that's not generating enough foam, perhaps that's one of the issues. So look to upgrade to one of these quality foam cannons. That's a good investment. It'll last for many, many years. Uh, then the type of snow foam that you're using. So a lot of people use some cheaper shampoos or just car shampoos that weren't really meant to be used as snow foams. Don't forget, snow foams sometimes have different chemi chemical formulations. Uh, also, some car shampoos can be used both in the wash bucket and in the foam cannon, and they do a great job. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, quick off the top of my head, uh, Koshemi GSF, so gentle snow foam that can be used in the wash bucket and also in the foam cannon. Uh, the Adams uh, car shampoo can be used in the bucket and in the snow foam, uh, foam cannon, so those work quite well. Uh, but here today, we use probably one of the thickest foaming ones on the market, the Adams Mega Foam. So if you're looking for a snow foam that generates tons of foam, uh, that's another factor. Uh, number four, the dilution ratio of your snow foam. A lot of people, they start glug glug out of the bottle. They don't read the instructions. Uh, they come out with dilution ratios that make no sense. So they're probably over diluting. For example, if you're only adding about an ounce of some cheap shampoo and you're filling up the rest of your container uh, with over a liter of water, you're probably over diluting. So the good starting ratios are typically around one to eight to one to 10. But look for the instructions on the bottle. They tell you exactly how to start off. So the good starting point is read the instructions for the dilution. Do that and readjust accordingly after you've done your testing. So you might need a bit more foam, so add a bit more if you want some thicker or richer foam. And last but not least, the fifth element or the fifth point that influences the thickness and richness of foam is the water quality, guys. So in my garage, I am lucky enough to have a water deionizer setup, which means I have zero PPM. So there's literally no minerals in the water. So the purer the water, free of any minerals, the richer the foam you're going to get, the more suds you're going to get in your bucket. So it activates the suds and the shampoo even more. Uh, uh, the minimum I would get is at least uh, some type of water softener, uh, but the best is water deionizer, reverse osmosis, or RO water, or even distilled water or demineralized water. If you want to get those, that should greatly impact your water for sure. So if you have hard water issues where you live, that's normal. You're going to get less foam. Keep that in mind. So those are five factors that influence. So you can play around with those, right? If you don't have a DI system at home, a, de a water deionizer, there are simple ones that you can get. I'll leave links in the description under the video. I did a video, by the way on my water deionizer setup, and that really is a game changer because you can even wash in direct sunlight. You're not gonna get any water spots because there are no minerals left, so when the water evaporates uh, off your vehicle, it doesn't leave water spotting behind with DI water because there are no minerals, so no water spotting issues, so you get a spot-free car wash experience, so I really like that. Um, what else can I say? So yeah, would you guys love to see an updated foam cannon battle video? So the last one I did had the Chemical Guys uh, Wide Mouth Foam Cannon. It had the MJJC Foam Cannon Pro, but the version 1.0, not this updated version 2.0, which by the way, yes, they produce more foam compared to version 1.0. It had the Griot's Garage uh, Brilliant Foam or Brilliant Shine Foam Cannon uh, in there and the MTM PF22.2. Are there any other foam cannons that you would want to see in a battle and would you want me to include this and uh yeah by the way big big news i heard uh from the grapevine that uh, there is gonna be an updated 3.0 version of the Foam Cannon Pro from MJJC in September of 2023. So I don't know when this video is gonna come out, but I'm filming this on August 15 of 20, 2023. And I heard through the grapevine that there is an updated version 3.0 of the Pro coming out. I don't know what it's gonna be about. I hope uh, they're gonna update this to kind of a clear uh, material, just like this one. That's what I would like, uh, but perhaps a bit more sturdy. And I would really like this quick connect type screw on. So you open it with a half twist, you close it back, super easy to operate. So I hope they will uh, update the 3.0 with that. But of course, you're probably gonna see it on the Pandy Organizer channel. So stay tuned for that. I'll leave the links guys to all of this stuff in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. If you guys used any one of these foam cannons, I wanna have your feedback. Did you have any issues? If you did have issues, did you contact the company? Were they good enough with customer service? I'd like to have your feedback uh, for this community, feedback from my 
viewers is super important. The brands read your comments. Oh yes, they do. And they try to improve. So uh, it's a good thing to let them know. Are they up to par? Are you satisfied with the quality, the performance, all that good stuff? Drop a comment in the comment section under the video. So guys, in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.